Hi, I'm Brian Creer, tutoring high school biology. Today's topic, Periphera and Cnidaria, two phyla in the animal kingdom that we're going to cover today. First up, both are invertebrates, so don't be expecting too much backbone. We're going to start out with Periphera, and that's pretty much just sponges. Alright, now, sponges are hollow. They look kind of like this, and they don't move at all. You may, of course, start wondering then how they get food. Since they are animals, they're heterotrophic. They can't make their own food, so where do they get it? Well, this all has to do with their pores. If you look really closely, you can find these very specialized cells called choanocytes. These have flagella, and what they'll do is beat their flagella in unison to start moving water into the sponge. And then, of course, they'll go out through a big hole in the top called the oscula, since they can't go out through any of these holes, which are all beating water inwards. But how does this help the sponge? Well, sponges are what we call filter feeders, small microorganisms that are located in the water that get pushed in through the sponge are actually caught and digested once they act enter the sponge. Well, that's a sponge's life. Let's move on to cnidarians. Cnidarians, they belong to the phylum cnidaria. They are known for these things, I'm going to throw this word at you, cnidocytes, stinging cells. They have this specialist structure known as a nematocyst, and if you want to envision a nematocyst, imagine something like a harpoon. These things are really nasty. They're barbed, they've got a big coil, when you get stung by a, a cnidarian, they'll throw, shoot this barb into you, and they'll just pump toxin in. Now, usually it's not all that toxic. For sea anemones, not so bad. But if you get stung by a jellyfish, those things can really hurt. All right, most cnidarians have two phases in their lives, polyp and medusa. As a polyp, you can see this looks kind of like a sea anemone. They're sessile. That means they don't move. These tentacles out here, they contain the, the, the cnidocytes. And if a prey moves in kind of here-ish, let's say it's a fish, oh boy, I draw bad fish, they might get stung by the cnidocytes and then brought in here and digested. Medusas work more or less the same way, only these are actually moving. And so if we again have our fish, these could get stung by the cnidocytes here and digested like that. There is one important difference between polyps and medusas, though, and that's reproduction. See, polyps are generally not the reproductive phase of cnidarians. That's the medusa. A male medusa and a female medusa can get together and produce a larva. This is the consequence of their mating. This will float along and eventually attach to some rock or precipice where it can grow, and it'll grow into a polyp. The polyp will then do this thing called budding. It'll produce sort of a medusa on top, which will ultimately float away and mature into another medusa. And that's how cnidarians work. All right, to recap, periphera includes pretty much just the sponges. These are mostly hollow animals. They have a big hole at the top known as an osculum. They eat through filter feeding. That means water is pushed through them and small microorganisms in them are digested inside. Water is pushed through with these specialized cells known as choanocytes. You can find these in the pores of sponges. These will beat flagella to cause a current going through the sponge. Cnidarians have these things called cnidocytes, which are stinging cells. They have this mechanism called a nematocyst, which is basically a barb that can have toxin pumped in through it. Cnidarians have two major phases in their life, polyp and medusa. As a polyp, cnidarians do not move, and the cnidocytes are located on the tentacles as ever. Prey is brought in after being stung. As for medusa, more or less the same thing, only upside down. Stung by the tentacles on the bottom and brought in to be digested. Medusa, however, is the reproductive phase of a cnidarian. When two medusa, one male, one female, get together, they can create a larva, the result of mating, which will drift around until it finds suitable ground to grow into a polyp. The polyp will then bud, creating a medusa at, on top, which will ultimately float away and mature. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brad Creer. See you next time.